Okay, so you want to make a film out of a poem. Where do you start? Well, the first thing you've got to do is choose your poem. And then it's a case of how do you want to portray it? A poem is a selection of words, just like you'd find in a song, or any other piece of dialogue for that matter. How descriptive is the poem? Do you want to hear the poem recited as a background using images to portray the poem? Do you want to dramatise the poem? Do you want to create a soundscape to enhance the feeling of the poem? These are just some of the questions you need to address before beginning your project. Personally, I like working with poetry because of the challenges that it presents. From my first example, I've taken a poem from Bella. I felt I needed to film locations representative of the words being recited. Anne and I spent hours walking the Clent Hills in order to try and find locations that fitted the description of the poem. How like a quarry face, the hills, High ridgeline bristled with trees, clent, great jawbone of a whale, its four stones angled like teeth. How like a treasure trail, the mile, a hollow way, a highwayman's track, mapping close to the cover of trees, then swinging out and looping back. How like a chessboard, the wood, where trees stand like pieces in rows, where black of elm face white of birch, knights and queens now rooted in earth. The next example was quite unintentional. I'd recently read Meditations on the Junkyard. Jack Reed, Anne and myself were blocking for just in time at the Black Country Museum. This short film is the result of a chance encounter of an area resembling a junkyard. Meditations on the junkyard. The erosive beauty of rust, eating away the shiny surface of things, randomly loosening a functional design here, a corporate logo there, revealing unexpected landscapes. Familiar shapes layered in all the wrong ways, make their own compositions, settle down for the long haul. Not a quick, easy charm this, but a slow weathering through ice or fire alike, each change making its mark, intended or accidental. A metamorphosis in recycling and rust. Now, an attempt to dramatise a poem. In this scene from Bella, the descriptive words of the poem speculate on what kind of life the wearer of the shoes had lived. I think the weather and the fire flickering in the background help with the atmosphere for this scene. Did these reveal the identity of who Bella really was? Bella's shoes lead nowhere. Suppose it took a woman's eyes to read the nicks in the fabric, notches on the welt, and see more than just the passage of time in the base of rubber worn down to a shine. Hand the shoes to a nailing wench. She'll tell you that Bella was a pianist. Peddling the bellows down at the forge, her own shoes are creased just the same. Hand them to the lass who dollies the chain. She'll tell you how Bella used to dance, waltzing between furnace, anvil and shed. Her own shoes are worn and losing their tread. Hand the shoes to any of our women, and they will see in the scuffs at the heel, the morning rush at the rations counter, and hear the pacing down in the shelter, hear the wear from walking to work, hear a crease from kneeling at church a broken back from being slipped on at night, the fabric discoloured from absence of light. 
take the shoes again. Let them lead you back to a time before she died. Here, her livelihood. Here, her life. More drama from Bella portraying a woodland scene. This time we introduce a subtle soundscape. See if you can pick out the birds, the wind in the trees, the woodpecker, the footsteps in the leaves, the buzzing of the bee, the shrill blast from a whistle. A full-scale search of the area. Bluebells. First light steals across high treetops, and the forest wakes, not with a yawn or with song, but in an opening of eyes, in stillness, as the forest waits to thaw. Between the trees they call to each other, treading softly their eyes to the ground, home guardsmen combing even paths, and boy scouts kicking clumps of leaves. And all the while, the witch elm watches. Its stiff branches even dawn cannot cure. They mark it with a cross, but speak no rites, as bones resurface amongst the bluebells. Another short but very descriptive poem from Bella. This time I chose to apply a very busy soundscape. Dog Kennel Meadow. Bella thrusts her arms in the water up to the elbow, scrubbing at muddied hems, the skirts and shorts of other women's children. Children who roll in dirt with mongrel dogs, who tug sticks from their jaws, the eldest who feed them scraps, and the youngest who chase after wagging tails in only their shirts. For the final example, I've chosen to show you another dramatisation from Bella. This is a mini story in its own right. It's about a letter describing the memories of a love long since gone. Although the memories of the past continue to be described, the soundscape drags us back to reality. We hear air raid sirens, the drone of planes, bombs falling, and even the sound of breaking glass. Postcard confiscated from suspected German spy, Joseph Jacobs. Shots. We began with a waltz, do you remember? The little cafe Drea, the dance hall of the Bieber house. Men there called you divine the Angel of Hamburg, and I thought I would have to recite Holderlin just to keep you in my arms. But then we danced to idle melodies, and with your chin on my shoulder, you told me of the letters you had received, of the new dress you had bought, the rising price of sugar. That is how I knew it was love. Later, when we danced, you would tell me of other things, how the swell of the orchestra sounded to your ears like the static hum of a wireless. How the tunes of the cabaret distorted to the coordinates and call signs you had committed to mind and taught your tongue in a Midlands lull. I grew scared of you then. We began with a waltz, but we ended in a blitz. Is it you I write to, Clara? Or is it C-L-A-R-A? Was this how Bella was recruited? To conclude, poems can be complex. What is the poet trying to say? Try to understand the words of the poem. If necessary, research the meaning of the words. Look for the story within the poem. Think about how you want to portray it. A poem is like the initial sketch of an elaborate painting. Your job is to take it to the next level, the next dimension, and finish it. <laughs>